Hello, hey, hi, howdy, welcome. Welcome back. It is living room floor version of Brady and I will be your host for the afternoon. So an Adidas commercial. This actually was an Adidas spec commercial, um, but it was a very well put together one to the point where the quality was that of a commercial for sure. So I wanna talk about this video, primarily the lighting of this just how we lit this because it was a really intricate setup. It was one of those setups where we can get really creative and have a lot of fun. And everybody comes together because that's the beauty of spec ads. It's just, we want everything to look as great as possible. So that's exactly what we did. Now, I can't list off everybody that was a part of this. So I'm putting it here. I cannot thank every single person for being here because we couldn't have done it without all of these people here. So a huge thank you to all of them. Go show some love. They're all extremely talented individuals. I was just a dude with the lights. This project itself was DP'd by Mr. Brian Durkee, one of my dear best friends. He's amazing. He's so talented as a DP. So before we dive into the good old lights, I want to say the camera was the Blackmagic Ursa 12K, which was actually a really cool camera. I've never worked with that. And mainly he was using the uh, DZO Pictar Zoom 12 to 24. And he also had, I don't know what it was. It, was, it, was, it might've been a DZO 50, some sort of really fast 50 millimeter prime as well. Um, and you can see that with a lot of the more tight detail shots, especially him on the bike. So we got into this warehouse cause this was the location we were shooting at. And we just started to work from the ground up. Durkee was like, where do you want some lights? Like, where do you think would be cool? Go crazy. And I was like, sweet. All right. And, and we didn't get the chance to do any kind of pre-light or anything like this. It was really just show up to the location, figure it out as we go. And that's just kind of what we had to work with. So I got there and I saw all of these overhead beams that were there. And I was like, okay, I know that we could rig something overhead because the, the actions of the talent were going to be like moving around. And we kind of had to do a one and done lighting setup. And all of the shots in this were just with this one and done lighting setup. We didn't make any changes throughout the entire night. We just didn't really have the time. So I knew that we needed something broad that would work for both wides, but also look really nice when we came in on the tights. So I was like, all right, well, if he's playing soccer, we could maybe like put something overhead and just have like this orb of light, just kind of this pool of where he's going to be, where his home will be on this scene which might add the set decoration in the scene was just beautiful. It just made it so much better. I never would think to put rocks and brush and a carpet backdrop all in an industrial warehouse, but it worked and it worked well. So the first thing that we did, uh, I was like, Dirky, what if we put a 600 C up there just so we can have like a soft light source uh, and also have the options of colors and by color and all of that. He said, great, let's do it. So the first step that I wanna talk about is this Aperture 600C. And we put this up on this rafter beam using a C-clamp. Now I wanna say safety is important here. We put it on a C-clamp and then I put one or two safety cables around it just in case anything were to fall. It was all, you know, safe. So we did this 600C and then on that, I put a light dome 150. Now I used the 150 because it's larger and I knew that being up in the ceiling, it was gonna be far, so I wanted a big source so it wasn't just very, it wasn't like specular and sourcey coming from a small softbox from that high. So that's what we did. And then additionally, I knew that I wanted to keep a lot of the warehouse black. So I used a grid on top of that softbox as well. So the grid is just gonna isolate the light being a nice soft circle coming down on the talent in the scene, but not spilling onto the backdrop, not spilling into the rest of the room and bouncing around. It gives the softbox a very soft but controlled look. And then the 600C, I, I know I played around with it and there was one point where I was just looking at the monitor and I was like, what if we just like, went a little crazy? And I started to get into the HSI side of things and played with some color and I was like, what if we just go into this deep red orange world there? And it gave this really like deep, deserty feel to the brush in the tops of the rocks in the top of the Adidas hat, which was custom made by the way, it's just so cool. But I, I, I decided with this world of like this red orange, kind of this rust color and Durkee loved it. Everybody loved it. It gave a really nice accent throughout the top of the scene. So that's what we rolled with for the first light, but we couldn't use it as a key light because he had the hat blocking his face. So I knew we needed something keying in from the side as well, which kind of gave motivation for the next light I want to talk about. It was an Amaran F22C, and I just had that open face for that diffusion bouncing off of a six by six sheet of ultra bounce, just giving us the biggest, softest source that we could get. I wish I would have an eight by, it would have been a little bit larger source, 
but what we had on the grip truck was what we had. So I used the F22C and I set this to a tungsten like 2700 Kelvin. And I just had this bouncing off of that ultra bounce just to key in from the side of the entire scene. So you see it mainly on the talent space, but you also see it spilling onto the rocks, the ground, just creating this really nice warm ambience coming from frame left. Not to use a really bad pun or anything, but I wanna shine light on the backdrop and talk about what we did there because I think it was really cool. So we see the slash of light that's on this carpet because we wanted to bring attention to the carpet backdrop and the texture of it, but we didn't really know how. I was like, do we do a gradient up? Do we just have like fill? But then I was like, what if we just do a slash across it just to add like a pop of contrast and texture? Here is shining at it, but like then it'll be very oblong. Like. I think oblong is dope. Could we, could we slice it from this side so it's more the Adidas logo? Yeah. And then we decided that, well, motivated by the Adidas logo, the three stripes, what if we just have one slash of light kind of motivated off of that? So that's what we did. And to do that, we used a 300X, an Aperture 300X, because we wanted a bicolor light to bring that down to 2700 Kelvin. And we put that through a Aperture Spotlight as well. So then we can use those blades to create this slash of light on the backdrop. And then moving forward, one more time we used a Spotlight was on the ground. I was like, how can we bring attention to the rocks in the brush and stuff like that so i was like what if we just shine a light really low on the ground we could do a low boy like right here and then with the projector just create this little strip so it doesn't hit the ground yeah. it's just the foreground let's do that and then put the raking across all of this so i used another 300x same setup with a spotlight 2700 kelvin i think i had it at again and I just brought the spotlight blades really narrow so it wasn't spilling on the ground too much. It wasn't spilling on the talent. It was really just pushing across, you know, the grass that was up there, giving a little bit of an edge light or a side light to it. Same with the rocks. And it added just a lot more depth and texture to the scene. And I was really happy with this light because it was, it was ultimately an experiment. I was like, what if we try this? He was like, yeah, sure, go ahead. We got time. And I threw it up and it looked great. And just to mount it, we kind of jerry-rigged a little setup on the floor. I think it was like, a pancake because we didn't have a cardellini the grip truck forgot to put a cardellini in there so i think it was like a c clamp or something resting on a clamps or something like that it was really like roughly put together but i knew i wanted a low light source so now i want to move forward or i guess i could say move backwards and you can see from behind this backdrop there's this glow that looks really good especially with the wet down because we chose for a wet down on the floor just to get even more uh, you know, a uh, reflection and light dynamic. I still don't know if that's a word, but we used the 600 X that was back there again to bring down to 2700 Kelvin. So we just had this on a stand behind the backdrop with the reflector dish bouncing kind of straight at the backdrop. So it would give a little bit of texture to the haze and then also create this reflection off of the ground. But you can see up top on the ceiling, there's like tin foil or something very reflective that was taking way too much to the top side of this 600. So I just took like a little two foot flag and I put it like a little umbrella over it so it wasn't spilling up. It was really only spilling onto the floor. And then when we moved into some of the handheld shots, we wanted to work with some hard point sources flaring into the lens directly. So the last light that we had in stock on hand was an Aperture 600C. Uh, and we put this over the frame left way out and they're not necessarily compatible, but we used an Aperture 2X Fresnel just because it's the only modifier we had to get a very direct light source. So we put the 600C with the Fresnel, just zoomed way in on like kind of the subject of the scene. So it wasn't spilling on the entire scene. It was really mainly the talent. So as we were running around with some handheld shots, you get the occasional rim light and flare into the lens. And it just added a little bit more character. We just wanted a lot of like 360 as we move around the camera, we're always gonna get some sort of interesting lighting setup. And I knew that was the goal as we were going into this because we couldn't make any modifications. It was just kind of light for every angle and every shot. So as far as the lighting goes, that's all that we had. All that we had as in it wasn't a lot of gear. It was intricate, but you know, we wanted to just kind of go crazy and get creative with it because it was a spec ad and spec ads are just, they're fun because it brings so many people together as like this little film family and we're just all in it for the creativity and just trying to get the best product out of it and that's exactly what happened on this set so spec ads are very important it's important to add to your portfolio it's important to network and meet new friends and meet new people i am 100 percent for spec ads i want to thank everybody once more for one letting me shoot the bts so you guys can see this but also just putting this together 
and making it all happen. So uh, you guys are all amazing. And so are you guys that are watching. So that's all I've got for you guys. I'm going to head out of town here. And uh, who says that? Some things, I swear, they just come out when I'm talking. It just makes no sense. But we're going to leave that in here. But that's all that I've got. So I love you guys, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.